One thing I always do is just tell actors that I'm as afraid as they are, you know, because I, I can sense that and I feel it too. And I feel if you have a community and you're creating something together, if everybody knows that there's not one answer and there's not one right way to do that, something, it, it creates communication. I did that with Susan when we were shooting Feud and she was um, signed on, but I constantly felt she was gonna bail. And I <laughs> finally got her to admit that she was afraid of you know, mm -hmm. tackling it. I said, well, I'm afraid too. And from that came a communication of, okay, how can we make this better for you and a safer space? And that's just what I try and do. And I am now at a point where I'm kind of only interested in doing stuff that scares Seriously. me because that's where the goodness comes from. How did it feel to be the most beautiful girl in the world? It was wonderful. The most joyous thing you could ever imagine, and it was never enough. In making Feud and in exploring sort of where Hollywood um, had been and, and, and these relationships, what was the most surprising thing you learned about the sort of Hollywood business? Well, probably that nothing has really changed. I mean, for me, talking to a lot of um, the crew members who were older and specifically talking to Jessica and Susan who've been around since the 80s. That was the most painful thing, that how women are treated and, and ageism in our culture. There's really not been that much progression. I think there's more of a conversation. That to me was the great part about it. Mm -hmm. But the sad part about it was hearing Susan and Jessica talk about the last years of Davis and Crawford's life and, and their current creative life, how difficult that has been for them and how much they have to give and they want to contribute. Mm -hmm. And they both have said, you know, you hit 40, 42, and suddenly the phone stops ringing and that's right when you're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So that that's, was not fun. You no. know, it's painful. And But I'm glad that we got to talk about it and write about it. Sure. All right, so between the six people at this table, you have explored, and I'm gonna get this right, you've explored themes including harassment, rape, murder, sexism, classism, racism, misogyny, mental illness, I could keep going, but I'm not going to. <laughs> As storytellers, when was the last time you were sort of genuinely nervous to tackle a, a big subject? In the executive suite, generationally, it has changed. Mm -hmm. And so now I feel like all of the things that you just listed, if you do a piece of material that doesn't dig into that, the executives tell you that you're failing, that you're not doing enough. Whereas when I started, you couldn't do anything. Like as a gay person trying to write a gay character in 1998, it was so um, difficult. And I feel like that has been a generational shift in um, people who are coming up who are more social, more liberal, more interested in leaning into that, yeah. at least in, in my regard. I don't know what you guys feel, but I've felt that um, there's just an enlightenment, I think, going on in every arena of television now that sure. wasn't there before. Which doesn't reflect society. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How is the Trump era being infused, if in fact it is, into the shows that you are doing. You've talked about maybe exploring it with a season of American Horror Story, which may be fitting. Yes, we... Um, what does that look like? <laughs> a true American uh, Horror Story. It is a true American Horror Story. Um, yeah, I mean, we're sort of leaning into it. I think that that sort of is interesting to us as writers, and so it begins election night. The show begins with election night and the national conversation and both the euphoria and the fear. And there will be a Trump and there will be a Hillary? On television. On television. Yeah. What are the things that you guys get approached for, that you, the box that the industry sort of historically has wanted you to be in? Anything with a feather boa, I go <laughs> first. I, I, I think Ava's right. It's, it always is about what you just did, right? So when I did... The People versus O.J. Simpson, it was a lot of crime stuff, a lot of true crime stuff. And then it was, then I did Feud, and now it's a lot of Hollywood biopics. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's always trying to recreate sort of what your last visible creation was, I suppose. Is there a type of project that you are not approached for, but you would really like to uh, do, and here's your chance to, to say it? And I want to do an astronaut movie, or an mm. astronaut something. Hmm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That sounds good. Hi. What's up, YouTube? What's up? I'm Ewan McGregor. I'm Billy Bob Thornton. Ryan Murphy. Thanks, thanks for, for watching The Hollywood, Hollywood Reporter. Reporter on YouTube. Hold on.
Make sure to see. I can't even read either. Make sure to subscribe for more stuff and things.